Uh, right at YouTube, we're going to play some more Bricks of Death Shatter today. I've made one switch. Um, going to try out a second Blood Crypt. Just another red source of mana in the deck. So, I'm just going to give that a whirl. I'm almost done this little project that I'm on. I've only got, I guess, a total of 12 more matches to play. So I'm probably will run through all 12 of those tonight. Then my little project will be done. All right, so let's jump into it. I re-sleeved my deck today. I actually switched it up, um, made it this list that I've got here. Jump back into it. All event tickets. <coughs> I wonder what they're going to hit with the BNR tomorrow, if they're going to do anything. I wonder. I'd like to see I'd like to see Ancient Stirrings go. I think that card's just like absolutely heinous in the format. And the best cantrip goes into non-blue decks. Gives the, those decks things does things to those decks that they shouldn't be done. They shouldn't be done in my opinion. So I'm I'm hoping that goes. Um, looks like I actually have to get a light on. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, you think Stoneforge Mystic is going to be a band? I don't know. I think it could be. I think it would be fine. It's pretty good. We're going to keep it. I'm going to Serum Visions on one. Just to make sure I hit my second land drop. I think Stoneforge Mystic would be fine in the format. I'm a big fan of any card that because like this Death Shadow is the best Death Shadow is the best fair deck in modern and it's um we're gonna put this on the bottom we're gonna put the second land on top because we need a second land um Death Shadow is the only playable fair deck in modern because of this this is why you can't play anything but Death Shadow and do well with fair decks because of this shenanigans so anything that um, anything that promotes fair magic is good for the good for us. Four scavenger grounds. We're gonna take his agent stirrings. Play this. Let me go. It's gonna be tough to get our death shadows online. This is gonna be a tough one to win. The turn one relic shuts off. Like we don't have a super explosive draw with shadows, and we don't have. A delve draw either, so this is gonna be tough. Oh wow, they're just gonna cycle this. Okay. They hit the forest. They kept the. Oh, it's a second tower. All right. Red fetch land gas. I watched some of it. Didn't get to watch all of it. I went. Uh, I spent some time with uh, my family members. Okay. Um. So what kind of game is this gonna be? We're going to ditch the Skirmag Angler, and I think I think we're going to ditch this Scalding Tarn and play two Death Shadows next turn and have Stubborn Denial. All right, so I'm just going to take a Walking Blista because it can actually mow down one of my Death Shadows, which doesn't happen often. We're just going to hope that they don't hit Tron here. Okay, there's a sphere. There's still two lands off of it. So, gonna get pretty aggressive with a stubborn. Anything we can stubborn denial here, we're gonna do it. All right, yep, we're gonna get that. So, we know my opponent's four cards. And next turn, we're definitely gonna fire off our Faith is Looting for probably a fetch land, honestly. Oh, God. 
So now we got to find something to grow these shadows. I think that thought sees is probably what we've got to take land thought sees. So we just need to accelerate our clock here. So I'm going to take one worm coil engine. We might be able to beat a worm coil engine if we can find a battle rage. Oh my god, they just ripped both Tron pieces like an absolute. <sighs> Okay, put on the bottom. So I drew this. I think I have to go bottom. If I put this on top, I can cycle to five, fetch shock. Because <clears throat> they have, they just have uh, Karn scavenger grounds left in their deck. So I actually just need to find my second battle rage. So I have to bottom this. <clears throat> Alright, we're just going to hold our land. Hopefully they go Karn tick up for some reason. As long as I start banhearing people for talking about the matches. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know. I, the, the matches that I saw were, were fine. I didn't think there was anything odd going on. This sucks so bad they ripped consecutive Tron pieces on us. I still probably win next turn if I draw a Battle Rage. But I've got to draw exactly Battle Rage. Or this Karn's just going to eat both of my shadows and I'm going to lose. Yep. I'm just going to take this hit. Oh, they just... Probably that makes sense for them not to do that. And yeah, we're good. That was just, that was just savage. What was wrong with the matches? I didn't see... There were no matches that I saw that were even that bad. I mean, it's just modern, right? Like, you know, that's sometimes how modern goes. Okay, so... I want these. These. And these. I don't want any of my removal spells. Even though they bring in Thrag Tusk after sideboard, it's still just... Not worth having, and I'm going to shave a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, we're going to go just like this. Just going full. Going to be able to kill some artifacts, counter some stuff, and then put our heads down and go pedal to the metal. I would like to play first. So I'm going to keep this hand because it's going to enable like a pretty quick Death Shadow or a pretty quick Gurmag Angler. Um, we don't have it right now, but I can look at five. I can look at five cards this turn. So <clears throat> I'm going to cycle both Street Wraiths and hope to find a little bit of action right off the bat. Okay, so now I'm going to fetch Black Red because I'm going to use my mana no matter what. I don't need to draw another land. Okay, so there's Death Shadow. So now, Faithless Looting to Double Shadow plus Angler. So I can ditch this, and I actually probably just want to ditch my other Death Shadow, because Fetch Land in the Graveyard is card number we have six, so I can go just play both of these next turn. Alternatively, I can just ditch my Snapcaster Mage. But Snap on Stub might be something we do. So I think I'm just going to discard the second Death Shadow. Uh, sorry, people talking about Essex Chief and the Invitational. Yeah, I have no comment. I, I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with that, and I don't really want to talk about that. Like, I, the guy had double face cards on him, and like, you can't play Magic with double faced cards. You can see through the sleeves. There's no problem with that. Yeah, well, we're not on it now, which is good. <clears throat> I 
So we just got the all natural Tron here. Oh, they're gonna dismember my Death Shadow. Okay. So this means they don't have a payoff. <clears throat> so they don't have a payoff next turn, so I'm just gonna hit this. I'm gonna look for some action right now. Bobble counts, not really, but they might play a Thought Not Seer, so I'm gonna bobble on their turn. The only thing that they could do here, unless they just have Natural Tron rolled up, and then if they have Natural Tron plus payoff, then I get really punished for this, but this makes me think that they don't have... Yeah, so they're, they're popping their map. This probably will get Sanctum of Ugin. Okay. I guess I could... If this, I'm going to feel pretty silly if they do something like a... Whatever it is here, an O-Stone. Oh, well, that's... Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's an accident. Like, the guy plays with Charter Course and Champion of Wits in his deck. He easily could, like, accidentally draw a different one. We you change a fan to Scrubland. <clears throat> Look at you, Rafi. You're so original. Probably just going to get ready to get Ulamogged here. What if we find a discard spell? All right, that's not, not terrible. So at least I can stub two things. So we can beat anything but like Worm Coil Engine or Ugin. And if this is... Okay, so we let him do that. We gotta make sure to flash and Snapcast from Mage here so that I don't get... I can don't get beat by Worm Coil this turn. I didn't drop my phone in the in the river, Rafi. <clears throat> I just got a new I just got a new one because mine was so messed up. You're spreading all these lies about me. Uh, we just need a blue land. Get our ambush viper on. Yeah. So we got that one. We get nasty on. We had a pretty good turn two. We just had a pretty explosive starting hand. Don't fight the narrative. Philly went swimming, though, like right off the bat. It was awesome. Like, no, didn't even need any coaxing. I don't think we changed anything player draw. Our cards are either pretty good. Our cards are either suck or they're okay. Dude, yeah, I did see that there were like four control decks in the top eight. Holy shnikes. So this is a turn two angler with no disruption, and my opponent kept seven. I'm going to play my angler on turn two, and it's just going to get killed. I need a mulligan. Like, I can't keep a turn. I can't keep a hand without a counter spell or a discard spell. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to keep this. Put a land on top. <clears throat> okay, so play map. All right, that is a great, great comment. Probably should have thought he's on one. They probably have Tron. They, they drew that expedition map for the turn. I just wasn't thinking. I was like, I was on turn the turn two angler auto mode here, but it probably would have been better for me to thought seize my opponent. But we're gonna do it on this turn, and then we might hold up rejection if we need to. Oh, I guess I got up ahead of the mark here. Our cute comment got me all confused. So, one, two. So, I actually play Gurmag Angler and hold up Ceremonious Rejection because of the good old, the good old Mishra's Bobble. One, two, three, four, five. Probably just going to get a Blood Crypt.
Dude, I love that card, Mistress Bobble. What do my opponent have on top? They have an O stone. So our we're gonna be working we're gonna be working some overtime here. We're probably not gonna have a chance to get this Death Shadow out. Like it's literally just gonna be we're just gonna be holding out. Well now that we drew a land, we're gonna be able to. Okay, got me DQ'd once. Or me queued, what do you mean? Got me DQ'd, yep. Sounds like your own fault, Robert. Or Rob, whatever you like to go by. Okay, before we make any decisions, let us thought seize our opponent. All right, so they have got nothing going on. So we're going to crack them. Play another Death Shadow, or play a Death Shadow. That Snapcaster is actually a pretty sweet draw for the home team. <clears throat> I saw you commentating, Rob. I thought you did a good job the day that I gave my uh, bits there. Got him. All right, so what am I worried about here? My opponent's dead next turn, so I'm just going to hold up Snap Ceremonious Rejection. I'm not going to just commit another Shadow to the board. So that actually just puts my... Hang on here. So if I go Snap Thought... See, snap Rejection on that. They have to pay two mana here. One, two. That's gone. They play their land. They can only have five mana. Six mana. If they top deck, so if I just reject that, they scavenger grounds exile. They have a land drop, so they have three mana. <clears throat> land drop Urza's mine makes them have five mana, six mana with one draw step. So I might as well let them just use their mana here. There's no point in me hitting this with a counterspell. Oh, Swag Tusk is a good out there, Rafi. Yeah, we're going to hit this. We're just going to harass them. <clears throat> if they want this to resolve, if they, if they want this resolve, we got them. But if they hit Scavenger Grounds, we cut off about half of their draws. But I guess we'd cut their draws off anyways. No, this was... This was likely loose, I think, actually, now that I think about it. So they go down to five, up to six. Yeah, that was like that was loose. I should have just waited. Got him. Not much makes me happier than beating Tron, to be honest. <clears throat> Let's jump back in the league. I'm gonna grab a thing of water. I'll be right back. Hey, Eric Mage, how you doing? <sighs> yeah, so Infect 1. <clears throat> I think that's just showing that, like, everybody gets all excited. Like, Infect winging, that just blows my mind. Yes, Blue White was, what, put four copies in the top eight down in Barcelona? Uh, I'm going to – I don't have a removal spell or a discard spell. I think I'm going to mulligan. Hand's just not very good. This hand's worse, but I'm going to keep it. The guy who I work with on MTGO top eight of the SCG Open with Blue White. Nice. <clears throat> We're playing Bogles. We're getting slippery here. Nice. 
All right. Let's look what we got going on here. Now we do not need a Snapcaster Mage. I'm gonna get a Steam Vents here because I would. I'm either gonna bolt a Core Firewalker or a Core Spirit Dancer or stub something. The Slippery Boy is gonna win this game. I'm definitely going to fire this bolt off, probably regardless. Yep. Because we just, we got to get nasty or we're not going to win. Let's, we draw Death Shadow. We draw exactly like Death Shadow and Battle Rage we could win. But the odds of that aren't great. Five over with Amulet, nice. I like playing Amulet. All right. So you're saying there's a chance. I'm gonna fetch Swamp and then get nasty. Um, leave the Thought Scour in my graveyard. <clears throat> Not because I'm saying so little to produce colors, but because it makes summers. Yeah, because you have to pack. You need seven mana to pack for Titan. <clears throat> yeah, so it was interesting. Very interesting to play. Wow, they don't have it here? They don't have anything that's bigger than this Gurmag Angler? Nice. <clears throat> This is likely going to whiff. But I've got to start casting things. Yeah. Why didn't you just pass? I was tapped out. That was so stupid. Yeah, I was tapped out. Why didn't my opponent just pass me? Oh, yeah, I still can't do it. So this is going to be a tap land after I take five. Yeah, exactly. My opponent should have just path me. <clears throat> what is this? Ship that off while I still can. Because, see, like, if I draw Death Shadow here, I'm probably going to win the game. Um, put, put on the bottom. Chomp attack. I'm going to put this on the bottom. Well, hang on. No, it doesn't do anything. Because it's not like I can get the traction. Because I have to cycle into it and then I'm dead to both things. Yeah, now he's got us. <clears throat> yeah, that was that was very odd for my opponent. I didn't have any mana up, right? When I when I played that Gurmag Angler. All right. Well, I'm just board in these three cards and cut one bolt, two fatal pushes. Seems like a plan. <clears throat> Did you play in the chat? Uh, yeah, EE's great. I need to buy some EEs, which are expensive because it's what I, Rafi was telling me it was, or I guess Childs, whatever his name is, Childsby was telling me, Kidsby was telling me that it's modern, uh, a bunch of modern PTQs coming up. <clears throat> yes, but I think that's pretty narrow, right? We still have, we still have Dismember in, at least I believe I still have Dismember in the board. Yeah, I have Dismember in, uh, 
Oh, I should have done that a different way. I should have put the lightning bolt and kept one push in. Yep, that was wrong. I just like zoned out. We're gonna keep this hand. This hand's gas. <clears throat> they don't have a ley line where I'm... oh wow. I'm just gonna save this street race. Might hit a serum visions next turn. And I'm just taking a boggle anyways. They have Dryad Arbor, but I guess I'm just going to take this Core Spirit Dancer. The Dryad Arbor is going to be annoying because all these cost one. This this Thoughtseize is annoying though. Stoneforge Mystic is fine. It doesn't. There's like most of modern ignores Stoneforge Mystic. Um. I'm just going to start loading this Dryad Arbor up, which is going to kind of be scary. So I guess I'll just stub the Spirit Link of the Daybreak Coronet and just take the Core Spirit Dancer. It's going to make my EE pretty worthless. Yeah, it's, it's definitely very cool there. Okay, so we're definitely using our mana, so let's fetch first. And we get Blood Crypt. Cycle this. Okay, that's not bad, because that's going to let us hit. Like, we're just going to stub something here, and then we're going to snap Inquisition something else. I mean, it's nice that in a blue-white build, it can actually, like, win the game quickly. <clears throat> okay, so there's the Bogle. So am I going to get to the... I should be able to stub something this turn. Yeah, I'm just going to use my mana. And then I can actually, especially if I draw land, I can take the spirit link. I can take the spirit link and then E away the daybreak coronet. So let's go like this. Let me just get a steam vents. I'm going to see what I'm drawing. Alternatively, I can also just snap stub something. I'm drawing Gurmag Angler. <coughs> Yeah, I think I'm just going to hold up Snap Stub again. And then... Because if my opponent just plays Spirit Link, I can play Snapcaster and eat the Boggle. And then I can potentially EE for two away the Daybreak Coronet. <clears throat> yeah. Then I kill my Death Shadow, right? I mean, the Death Shadow is more important than my opponent's EE or their uh, what they have going on. And plus, the Umbra, the Umbra still saves the creature, so the problem is still there. <clears throat> like we haven't fixed an issue by doing it like that. Probably pretty greedy of me to not stub this a daybreak coronet. Well, now I kind of just want to hit this because there's no way they can cast the coronet. We kind of waste their turn. Because, like, they can't go, they'd have to go, they can't make double green or double white. So I'm just going to go snap stub this just to kind of keep them off of a turn. And if I hit a land drop, I'm just going to play the EE on two. And pass. Yeah, there's only we can, we can get rid of the Coronet without losing our Death Shadow. And what we're doing has got to be more important to us than what they're doing. So there's the planes. Feel your armor, okay. We're going to let that go. You dislike EE on two a lot. 
Well, the way they're going to win this game is with Daybreak Coronet, right? So they have Daybreak Coronet X. So I can hit, I can sit in here and crack for seven, and then just play a Gurmag Angler and try to EE them next turn. That's also kind of mopey. I think I'm going to play EE on two and Gurmag Angler. It's a little mana inefficient, but so blood crypt. I didn't really. There was no real method to the madness there. They probably just chump block. If they don't block, they're dead to battle rage, which is good to know. They don't respect that. Okay, at least well that block still leaves them dead to battle rage. Well, it's also interesting for me to go. I should. I, I could just go EE -E for one now, and also play Angler, and still have my opponent dead on the board next turn. Yeah, that's actually much better, I think. Because they're dead through Snapcaster and Gurmag Angler. I get wrecked by Path. Well, they're not dead. I'm. I'm sorry. I, I looked at the six, and then I thought like, I looked at the six, and that messed me up. I guess now that I drew Gurmag Angler, we can just go like this. I just go E on one. Two, three, four, five, six. I shouldn't have left my Street Wraith in there. That was a mistake. <clears throat> if my opponent doesn't do anything, then I'm just going to leave the EE there. It's kind of like Threat of Activation, effectively. My opponent has to commit more to this Boggle. Like for the rest of the game, I could just turn my Death Shadow and my Angler sideways. So they have Daybreak Corner X. I kind of want to hit it now, though, because it actually counters the Rancor. Yeah. <clears throat> Gasoline. All right. We got one more game to win, and we're going to submit the same card. Well, I'm actually going to board out a Lightning Bolt and bring in one more Fatal Push. I like Dismember because most of the time it's still going to kill Daybreak Coronet or Dryad Arbor. Or not Daybreak, Core Spirit Dancer or Dryad Arbor. It also supercharges my draw. The Bolt's decent because it also supercharges my draw, but I don't really see what else. I mean, you could argue that I should cut, like, one Snapcaster Mage for maybe, like, a Fatal Push or a Lightning Bolt, but... This hand's awful if my opponent has a ley line. But I get to stub the first play and I have three redraws. This hand could be anything. So I'm going to keep this. My opponent doesn't ley line me. Okay. It's a hand that definitely is going to struggle against ley line. But So we're going to do the bobble trick to start. That's that's nuts. Okay, we don't need another Inquisition. So let's go get a Watery Grave. Cycle once. Um... So I go one more time. Okay, so we hit another land. So I could just go EE -E for one pass, but then if they play, they can just make sure to get their whatever it is down. The one that protects it, the hyena umbra one. So I don't really I don't really like playing EE -E until I can crack it and make sure to get a creature. So I think we're just gonna go like this. A core spirit answer is going to be a problem. Now because I cycled so aggressively, I kind of have to take this Rancor. 
Because if I don't find a threat, I'm in big trouble. Yeah, we're just going to take this Rancor. We're going to have to see Death Shadow right here. That's what we're looking for. Or Gurmag Angler. Well, Dismember is pretty good. This Dismember is going to hit this Core Spirit Dancer. Opponent gets in for one. Or they're, they're not going to attack. This is, oh, I love it when that happens. So I might as well just dismember this now. I'm just going to fetch for a swamp. There's no need in doing ourselves too, too much damage. We're going to get there. Just get this thing off the board. Hopefully they crack this. Yep, that's good for us. No, that Umbra's that Umbra's bad news. <clears throat> so they still have Path to Exile in hand. That's not good. That's really not good. What are they drawing? They're drawing Rancor. We actually can't. We can't even deal with that Rancor. So my thought sees to take the path to exile, then I can hold the stub up, and they probably can't kill me next turn. But if I don't find Death Shadow pretty much on top of my deck, I'm in a lot of trouble. I mean, I could just ambush Viper, plan to find an untapped land. And then EE the stuff away. I kind of like that. How do I win? I have to get this off the battlefield. So I think we're going to try to ambush Viper this Slippery Boggle here. Okay, so there's our third land. So that's half the puzzle. Oh, they're not. this isn't going to work, though, because of the path that exile. That was so stupid. Yeah, that was a mistake on my part. The path's right there. I just zoned out. But they might just let this happen because, because of Totem Armor. But this was a mistake. I, or at least I might have come along to the same line of play, but it was a mistake for me not to at least think more about this Path to Exile. Because now if my opponent paths this, I'm likely just dead. Wow, they're going to let me block. That's so good. Which they did. They held the path. And we drew our boy. Yeah, I still think I gotta play engineered explosives. Here because instead of playing the shadow and holding, because I only have one piece of interaction and I have to counter this, and they have something, if they have something like a, a thing that gives this flying or um, something that gives this thing flying or the whatever it is, the pro creatures one, then I can't stop that. And now we just hope our opponent doesn't have another creature to put that thing on. And we're definitely thought seizing. Yeah, I'm just going to take the path. The other cards don't do anything. Oh, that's bad. That's really bad. Oh, that's so bad. Okay. So we're going to let that one go.
cartouche. We're going to counter that one. That was like the worst draw. Hey, Ben. Yeah, Spirit Dancer is tough for the home team. We don't have a lot of outs to that. So they still have a Rancor in their hand. Okay. I still can't attack. No. So I still can't attack with my Death Shadow. I guess there's no point. I might as well leave up. I might as well bluff Snapcaster Mage. E, e, this can go, this can go, this can go. And this can go. And now we just pass. The sick thing is that this Core Spirit Dancer might actually get larger than the Death Shadow at some point. We got one Fatal Push left in the deck. And Battle Rage. Battle Rage is always an out. They're just going to make a really big... They're going to get Dryad Arbor too. Okay, so there's the Rancor. Oh my gosh. That's just game. Yeah. Yeah, we just couldn't... We couldn't handle the, score, the Core Spirit Dancer. Like, that was the... That's the card that punished us. We could beat... We could beat most, or we, I'm not sure we could beat. We were in a tough spot, but we could handle most other things, or at least wind out a, or come out ahead of a lot of other things. But that top deck spirit answer was was just the nut, and just couldn't deal with it, which happens. I've sure top decked my opponents, a couple of my opponents out of games before in my my career. But we're gonna win three in a row here. Finish this league four and one, which will be gas. I've gotta finish how many games do I have to play? So I've been working on this project here. I'm gonna write about it. Write about Grix's Shadow. I need to play nine more matches, and then I've hit a hundred matches with this deck. Um this hand's kinda slow, but we have stub and lightning bolt, so I'm gonna keep it. It doesn't produce a threat very fast, but. And it's probably decent against Forest Deck. Yeah, oh, well, it's not good against Blood Moon Forest Deck. But actually, we have. We can fetch around Moon, which is nice. And they don't answer threats very well. So. I'm almost done my little project I'm going to do here Birds of Paradise. Now I should just fetch Island, I think. We're just not going to get mooned. Thought Scour is what we're looking for. I don't think we're going to be looking for Inquisition. I'm pretty sure that card is going to wear out its welcome by the time that we can cast it. It's just not going to hit anything relevant. Thought Scour is going to let us play Gurmag Angler, plus have Stubborn Denial next turn, presuming we don't get mooned out of this game. Hopefully they jam something like Chandra. Molten Rain. Okay, we'll take Molten Rain. Deals two damage to us, which is kind of convenient. One, two, three, four, five. So let's go like this. All right. So I'm just going to fetch shock one more time just to get us in death shadow territory. And then we're going to get old nasty going on. Get rid of our lands. Um, we don't K command the May deck, so we can get rid of that. And I'm likely going to be done. Like snap, like most, uh, most likely I'm going to be snap bolting something or snap stubbing something, but... 
But I can leave Serum Visions in over the other card there. This is Storm Breath Dragon. It's going to be pretty rough, which it looks like that's what it is. Yeah, that thing's going to be tough to race. So I crack for five, no doubt. And then the question is, do I snapcast or bolt them down to... I guess we're going to see what they do with this Birds of Paradise. Okay, so that's going to change the thing up. It might not. So now I got to think. This comes in for seven. So I think I have to let this go, because then I go snap, bolt, put them to 10, attack them for 7, bolt them, and kill them, and then hope this last, this, like, isn't lightning bolt. I don't think that they play lightning bolt. So we're just going to let this go. We're going to go to 1, and then we're going to flash and snap, cast some mage, attack, and lightning bolt our opponent. That does add up, right? 6 puts them to 7, 2, and 7. Yeah, so we go to 1. And then hopefully this isn't um, them just representing Lightning Bolt, which it is. Yeah. I'm not sure, we because we were dead to the Storm Breath Dragon, if we didn't do that. Like, I don't think, I don't think that's playing to win, to go Snap Bolt, unless my top card's like Team or Battle Rage or Dismember. Then it works out. The line that I have does kill them if this card's not Lightning Bolt. But that card was Lightning Bolt. So, what are you going to do? I'm going to get this in. I actually don't know how to sideboard into this deck. Card like Snapcaster doesn't seem that great against this deck. But then again, none of my... They play Trinisphere, so I should bring in like a Braid. Yeah, the, my worst card seems to be Snapcaster Mage. It doesn't seem like Snapcaster is like what the game's gonna be about. Like it's gonna be about just how, like getting a quick like one of these things down on turn two, and then just like interacting. Very low to the ground, I think. I might board some of them on the draw, but I, just, I don't think that's where I want to be. I, think I just want to have answers to two drop creatures, or one drop creatures, Trinisphere, and just have threats with just enough counter spells. Stubborn Denial is quite poor against the Blood Moon, Chandra, Torch of Defiance, Stone Rain deck. Like, they have, like, we lost the Storm Breath Dragon and Blood Rail there, which. Was stubborn and I was poor, but I, I think that I think that they that has game there. Uh, no, that, that was a dumb way to put that. I think that um, stubborn and I does have game in these scenarios. Hits stone rain also. Hits Chandra torch of defiance. Hits Utopia sprawl. There's plenty of targets for stubborn and I. I think it's a promo. I got this out of the player rewards pack. I'm all five. But they've got, I mean, they have Acid Moss. They've got, they have some numbers of Acid Moss, Utopia Sprawl, Blood Moon, Stone Rain, Chandra Torch of Defiance, and that's five, maybe Primal Command. I'm not sure. Um, so, I think we're going to do this now. 
I'm gonna get a blood crypt. We can get away with this because we're on the play, I think. If I play a Utopia spell, I'm gonna be pretty sad. So let's ditch one of these and likely don't need this abrade. Because we've got this. And then we're gonna hope our next two draws is a Death Shadow or an Angler. Yeah, they play. They some play Acid Moss. I don't know if they all play Acid Moss, but Acid Moss has been a sighting. So we're gonna have Gurmag Angler or Death Shadow is gonna be on my top two cards. I'm calling it. What do they do with their Scry? Put a card on top. I should have looked at that. Because you can Acid Moss on two, which is pretty insane with this deck. That sucks. Let's cycle. Oh well. One, two. So let me fetch first. I'm not. We're not playing around Blood Moon because we have the Blood Stain Myers, which are kind of awkward. One, two, three, four. I'm just gonna leave this looting because we don't have any Snapcasters anyways. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, Teddy, but like I just think that that's I think I think that's wrong. What what I don't understand, what makes it difficult for me is to figure out how much of each thing I want. And I only had three stubborn denials, right? Did I board him did I board in my fourth one? I did, yes. But like it doesn't seem like a Snapcaster matchup. Especially if they're playing white, which means they probably have rest in peace or ghostly prison. This seems like an incredible stubborn denial matchup. Again, we're not going to play around Blood Moon. Because we're we're out ahead, and I think we can get away with not doing it. The E, okay. Yep, the E is probably good. Put this on the... What is this? What are, what are these hitting now that matters? Like, I definitely don't want this. I probably... Like, this is hitting... If my opponents get like blood moons rolled up or ghostly prisons, I want this. Oh, they just scoop it out. Okay. We didn't, no. But we, we saw it there. So, we definitely want these. Um, uh, Stubborn Denial certainly gets worse on the draw. So, I probably can actually shave one of those. Because we're not we're not gonna be able to get on the front foot. My braids also seem kind of worse on the draw. I've also got engineered explosives to deal. I'm gonna go with if they have ghostly prism, they don't have trinosphere. So we're gonna try this. No, actually, because if they have white, they could easily have rest in peace too. Well, push hits. I feel like I need I need something to do on turn one, right? Like I, I think I don't think I can sit there and have a cantrip on turn one. I think I need to have stubborn denial, lightning bolt, fatal push, or dismember, because I've got to hit. Um, I have to deal with whatever name is like elvish mystic, or arbor elf. I've got to be able to deal with arbor elf because my opponent can present all kinds of things on turn one that are scared. I guess they have eight cards they can play on turn one that will make me need interaction on turn two, whether it's Blood Moon or um, Stone Rain. So like, while Fatal Push isn't great, I probably I probably need it, right? I think we're gonna go like this. I likely shouldn't have had my abrades in, in game one, should have just had the EEs in. So this hand's pretty good if my opponent has, if my opponent doesn't blood moon me on turn two. So if my opponent leads off with a creature, 
If my opponent leads off with a creature, his hand's very good. If my opponent leads off with an uh, with a whatever it is, his hand's not that good. But we have engineered explosives. I can fetch swamp or island. I think this hand is has like interaction for half the one drops they want to play, and has the ability to see a bunch of cards and land one enable both of our threats. So I think I'm going to keep this, and we have a free redraw. This is bad against Utopia Sprawl. My opponent doesn't have Utopia Sprawl, and this hand's pretty good. And this is like, oh, they don't have anything on turn one. That's great. Okay. <coughs> so now we can play around. We can fetch around. Uh, we can fetch around Blood Moon, which is nice. So let's cycle this. All right. And now we'll just hold up here. Push does nothing at the first turn. Well, I would agree that push does nothing after the first turn, right? I guess it doesn't quite do nothing. All right, we might be the old forced to. Uh... Okay. So we're punished for not shocking. So what do I want to do? I kind of want to fetch. I kind of want to fetch my swamp. Because I think I'm going to get Blood Moon this turn. And then next turn, the problem is I'm not enabling my Death Shadow. I could fetch Shock to get a Blood Crypt and then Faithless Looting and look for a Stubborn Denial. I did kind of mess myself up playing around Blood Moon with having drawn this Death Shadow. I think I'm going to go Mire. I think I'm going to go Mire, Fetch, Blood Crypt, and Faithless Looting as kind of like bad as that sounds. The problem is if we do that, we don't find a Stubborn Denial and they Blood Moon us, then I guess I can Looting again and I still have all my Cantrips. Yeah. Oh, no, I want to control Z this. Just kind of in a tough spot here. Little handcuffed. Let me go control Z with this mana here. Undo. Give my mana back. What? Is it not letting me have my mana back because I didn't take an action? What? What is going on here? It's because I clicked on this and I didn't unclick on it. It's not gonna, that's great. I mean, it cost me a card, right? And if I hit a stubborn denial. <coughs> Why can't I? All right. All right. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's kind of like we gotta bite the bullet. I'm gonna go with my opponent's not gonna play Blood Moon though, which is nice. So I'm probably not gonna play around Blood Moon, and we can deal with a ghostly prism. That's what comes down here. Yeah. Okay. That's that's like not really what this matchup's about. I don't think. So now we're not gonna play around Blood Moon. We're gonna go get Watery Grave. We're gonna cycle. Stubbs gas. So they had Blood Moon. Jeez. All right. Well, I guess I'm just going to take this Blood Moon. It doesn't really matter. Which one's worse for me? Probably the actually the go second Ghostly Prison is probably worse than the Blood Moon after I get this Death Shadow down here. I am just perplexed about what's going on in this game. So we're going to stub this. <coughs> then I might just pay two mana. I don't know what I'm going to do. 
Did I have the scour in my hand? That was a mistake. If, if the scour was in my hand, I just I didn't realize the scour was in my hand. I was trying to pay attention to like what was going, trying to fix it, and I sh that definitely should have looted. Yes. So dismember puts me to four, which means they have to top deck. If I go to four though, three though, then I'm dead to a couple cards. So I guess there's no need. I might as well just dismember for two life and then pay the two. This isn't a conventional Hansa deck, I don't think. <coughs> yep, so then I messed up, for sure. Okay. I'm gonna do this, try to find a fetch land. Then that was stupid of me. I should have looting because that gives me two looks at the fetch land. Um I'm actually just not, I'm not going to cycle this. If I can't kill my opponent, like guaranteed, I don't want to die to a top deck Storm Dragon. Like two, because then they, they can't play it in Monster Set. We don't die to like Blood Raid Elf plus Lightning Bolts. It doesn't really, like, again, it probably doesn't really matter how we're doing this. <coughs> what do you got, opponent? Nice. I wonder if that was, like, an Enduring Ideal deck, and it wasn't a Ponza deck. Well, they showed a stone rain, so it was definitely it was a weird build of Ponza. So, how's the chat's night going tonight? How is how is everybody in in chat world? I see um, Guy Geyerson in the Commander route has followed. If you guys are still in the chat, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I would like to play first. I actually don't really like this hand. I hate hands like this when you have one land and two Snapcaster Mages because they're essentially three drops. I think we can get away with it, though, because we have three pieces of interaction on one, and we're on the play. So if Snapcaster is our first play while we're on the play, our first way to impact the board, and that's not terrible. I'm gonna cycle on turn one though, before fetching. Just uh, okay, that's not that's nice. Let's go get Blood Crypt and Inquisition. I just dislike it. Like, it's, it's probably me being being uh, picky with the hands I like to keep, but like I just I dislike hands like that. My dog to this weekend went swimming. He just took right to it, which was awesome. All right, we're playing against Dredge. Well, this they were relying on that cathartic reunion, so let's get this reunion out of here. It's nice we hit we hit a uh, enabler. We dealt with three on Saturday last night with seven land venture. Nice. Teddy Junior's not doing good. That's sad. All right, nice. I do love me some Gurmag Angler on two, baby. Seven land bounce here, yeah. One, two, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, Moto's tweaking out. So I'm going to do this now because my opponent doesn't have discard spells in their main deck and I kind of want to keep the Thought Scour in my graveyard. 
so that I can have something to like instant speed Snapcaster back. The stinkweed is going to be really annoying. <coughs> All right, well, there's an answer to the stinkweed end. Hopefully, my opponent draws like draws like a light from alone here. Because like we have to kill the stinkweed end. Regardless of what we do, I'm probably just going to flash a Snapcaster Mage in instead of uh, dismembering it on my turn. So there's a mountain, so they can't cast it. What are they doing? They draw. They must have drawn Cathartic Wound. Then. What does that mean? What does the pump fake mean? Do they they don't play main deck lightning axe, right? Cause snap flashing in Snapcaster makes us a two turn clock. To play Axe in the main deck? Yeah, that's what my opponent just told me. I'm just going to flash this in. And if my opponent gets me here, they get me. But... I'm not sure how much it would have mattered having us drawn this lightning bolt, but yeah, they just scoop it out. So now we got to get aggressive here. And it's nice that we have two spell bombs in this matchup. Um, I actually like all the stubborn denials because I like getting ahead and harassing like a life from the loam. I think that's a good way to just get them to spin their wheels and lose the game. Um, Snapcaster Mage is okay. I often like to shave one. And then I kind of like just cutting fatal pushes. Because <clears throat> it's not often. like It, it doesn't auto-kill um, whatever the dumb card is. Um... No, actually, what I usually do is I usually, uh, no, it doesn't, like, auto-kill everything, and you can get kind of filled up on removal. And I kind of want all my Stubborn Denials and my Spell Bombs. And, I, like, I think it's, I think the game's going to be a little bit faster than Snapcaster Mage is going to do. If they show me, like, a Ley Line at their sideboard, I'll probably cut a Gurmag Angler and bring the Snapcaster Mage back in. But I kind of like get what you're saying there with Thoughtseize being poor on the draw. I'll go with that. I do want to have a threat on two. I, th I do think that the best way to win this matchup is to get a threat down on turn two. And while Gurmag Angler isn't the threat that we want, it still is something. And we're not going to win if we don't get anything. We're going to sub it here. Yeah, I just split the deck. I get what you're saying, Teddy. I, sp I split it. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to look to board the thoughts he's back in on the draw on the play, though. I think I'm going to ship this hand. We don't have a threat. And without a threat, we're not going to win this game. We don't have a threat or a spell bomb, so we're going to send this one back. We can do better on six. Yeah, we have a spell bomb, so we're going to keep it. And we have an angler. And we have a thought scour. So it's actually a pretty, pretty good hand. So I'm going to definitely fetch Watery Grave and play spell bomb on one. 
That's pretty good for the home team. This makes me feel this makes me want to inquisition my opponent because I think that they have like I would be willing to bet they have cathartic reunion. I want to inquisition my opponent. I don't really want to play this spell bomb right now because I bet they have inquis I bet they have um because to keep a hand on turn one without uh, whatever it is, without, gosh, I can't think, without looting or neonate, you have to have cathartic reunion or life in the low, or have a whatever kind of card it is. Um, what's the dumb card? Lava axe? Lava lightning axe? And we're not going to likely have to spell well on one, so I'm going to Inquisition my opponent. Yeah, so there's the Cathartic. <clears throat> Typically, judges, there have been Leyline of the Voids for the Mirror. That's why I cut Angler. How much is... Yeah, I mean, I can see that. I think that ley line. Oh, that's rough. So I could have taken Stinkweed Imp. Maybe I should have taken the Imp. But then they would have just dredged it back, so that was stupid. But we can still play the Angler on two, which we probably have to do at this point. Oh man, super. No, that's actually not that bad. That's not bad. Cuz we're going to we're going to be able to get this um we're going to be able to get this thing out of the out of play next turn cuz we'll just we'll hold priority on the spell bomb activation, we'll get revolt and then we'll push the stink weed in. Yeah, I don't want to bomb now. What happened there? They just do a misclick again. All right. I don't really want to thought seize my opponent after knowing what their hand is. So I think we're just going to get in with nasty. Play this untapped. Let me just get this thing down here. And the Nihil spell bomb will enable revolt for us if we want to just get rid of this stinkweed imp also. I could put like Dark Blast, like it's probably just not relevant enough hits. Okay, so here comes the imp. Okay. So now we hold priority, bomb my opponent, respond to the bomb, fatal push this, because we have revolt now. That resolves. We pay a mana. And then we get rid of it. Okay. All right, and that's pro that's probably game. I think I should have cycled before, um, before combat there. No, I wanted I wanted to clear my mana out. To be honest, because there's a chance that I just draw in like a fetch land or something like that and can delve another angler. Why do we get punished if it's a fetch land? This is sweet. Now we're going to get to play. Ditch this. Ditch this. One, two, three, four. One, two. Now I'm just going to. I'm going to hold my fetch land, I guess. <coughs> Let 
There's no sense. I might draw a fatal push. Well, I only have one fatal push in. But see, now it like allows us to use our entire mana on our turn, right? Which we wouldn't have been able to do if we'd have waited. My opponent goes bad games. All right, dude. Sounds good to me. Okay, here we go. Going for the 4 1. Go team. Yeah, I don't really have any sympathy for my opponent. Mulligan Faith is only the rest of the <laughs> Mulligan, yeah. Yeah, it's very salt. I don't necessarily think they were poor draws, right? Like, well, I guess they didn't hit a second enabler in game two. In game one, they just didn't play the right land, right? And by them not playing the right land, it kind of handcuffed them. But here we go. Here we go for the 4-1, the which I love 4 one matches. Which is one of my favorite pastimes. Soccer Dirtle. So, this is like a potential super explosive Death Shadow Hand, so I'm going to keep this. I could end up Serum Visioning on one. We might be playing like a value, the Value Town deck. Utopia Sprawl, okay. That's not good. All right, so I probably actually just have to fetch a swamp. This is so bad. I think I'm gonna fetch Watery Grave and Thought Sees a Blood Moon. If we see Blood Moon plus, because like we're not, we can't do anything without our cantrips. And Blood Moon and Stone Rain is what gets us. And I guess I could have beaten that. I guess I could have beaten the Blood Moon by fetching Swamp. But the problem is if I fetch Swamp then none of my cantrips are turned on, and I can't get these Death Shadows in play. We'll just take this. Has been only Thought Scour been good. What do you mean, has only Thought Scour been good, Magic Hero? I'm confused. Lucky. Okay, so they've played the Stone Rain and the Stomping Ground. So we're just going to fetch another Watery Grave and Serum Visions, because if I play Death Shadow, it just gets Lightning Bolted. And I would rather hit another Fetch Land so I can go Double Shadow. Neither of those are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm actually going to put <coughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... So if I actually go top, I'm actually going to put the Mistress Bobble on top. And I'm going to put the Denial on the bottom. Because in some ways, playing the putting the Bobble on top means I hit a land next turn for Gurmag Angler. In a roundabout way, it's kind of like a land. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Two. Yeah, I've been playing two. Yeah. And it's like almost cycling, but it's just slow. <clears throat> I'm going to play the Wolf Run, so drawing Wooded Foothills. What do we got? Stone Rain shirt. Alright.
Like this is pretty clearly just attack. Oh wow, turn off auto yields. What is going on here? Why did I skip through so quickly? And then we're just going to go fetch a blood crit, play death shadow, and my opponent's dead. This is why I think it was important to, to put that bobble on top. Because while it's not a land, and if my opponent does stone rain me, I'm basically, game's basically over. Uh, it just let me, it's going to let me end the game a turn sooner. Okay. Alright, that's pretty good. My opponent didn't play... Oh, they don't have a land. Okay. So what am I doing? I guess if I just bolt the tireless tracker and attack, then they have to block. They have lightning bolt in their hand. But I don't really think that changes that very much. We're just going to like... So they're probably going to block and bolt, and then if they have another blocker, then uh, I get to bolt that, but then they go to one. If I draw a land, I get to fetch, dismember, and then bolt it. Yeah, that would have been right, Sin uh, Chin Million. I, I didn't. Um, well, I think it's. I guess it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, this, this makes it so I get in damage at least. Because they could just go like double chump, right? Yeah, I think it was right to get the. to take the guaranteed Garmag Angler. I think, I think that was what was good to do because I've already like fallen so far behind that I think it was just worth getting getting Gurmy down. So my opponent can go double bolt my angler. Which kind of feels bad for them having me be at seven. But it might be the right thing for them to do. Yeah they're gonna do it. This is okay, we're gonna just play another Death Shadow. <clears throat> 46 viewers. I hope everyone's having a good night. Appreciate y'all for showing up and hanging out today. We got this game. Nice. And we're going to crack in for lethal damage. Six in there at six. Get out of there. Whoever's having a good night. Based on turn events. Yeah, okay, sure, but like Right? Are we being? Is it? Is it worth? Because like, what? What? What else gets me a guaranteed street rate? A guaranteed angler next turn? Either a land, another bobble, or a street race. And if I get lucky off a can trip, also. So. Seventeen card land. Seventeen land. Give us some credit there. Jonesy. How are you doing tonight, Cody? So I think I want to board the same way. Like, I don't think this is a Snapcaster game. And it's likely just explosives and stubborn denial. I kind of just want to board out all of my expensive things. My opponent's going to blow my mana base up. I'm sweating to death. It's like 100 degrees down here. In the concrete jungle. It's absolutely awful. Um, Hen Heifer, thank you very much. If you're Hen Heifer and e Etoro guy, thank you guys for the follows. I appreciate that a lot. I'm getting up here. I only need less than I need less than a hundred to get a thousand. I'm at like nine ten. 
Where are you, Archmage? Like, where? What are you whining about this heat with? This is what we're gonna do. Cut our expensive stuff. Oh, you're talking about Lava Man? It's only here in April, so now it's like 100 degrees. You're talking about New York? Aren't you in New York, Archmage? My opponent mulliganed. There's nothing I like doing more. So double explosives is pretty awkward. I think I'm going to... Well, no, because now that gives me a good looting thing to loot away. I think I'm going to keep this hand. I love thought seizing people after they mulligan. So... I think we're gonna keep this, and all we we don't need a lot to get another to get an angler on two, with disruption on one. So we're gonna keep this. Yeah, you're in upstate New York. Don't even don't even talk about heat. You can you can complain about the cold, but I don't want to hear that heat crap. Again, for everybody that follows, I'm sorry if I missed you. I, I keep my volume down because it messes with my YouTube videos. I'm not like that quite OBS savvy to know how to get all that to work. You know what I mean? Relic's awkward. So now I'm gonna lead on a thought seize. I'm trying I'm gonna try to overload this relic next turn. This is what my opponent taps out. I I agree with you, Teddy. It determines what was right and what wasn't. So this likely, my opponent's got double Blood Moon, so I don't really want to take one. I think I'm just going to take this Tireless Tracker and then hope to find something effective soon. Because I'm not going to, if there's a land, they put a card, they put a card on the bottom. I'm going to take this Tireless Tracker because they might just go like pop this Relic on their turn to cycle. And then, no, I'm still not going to be able to play Gurmag Angler. The double Blood Moon's kind of rough. I want a looting, I think. I think I want a looting more than I want to Thought Scour. Especially after having two explosives. I'm going to check out their top card. Because they're either going to draw or at least I can have a little more information. So they're drawing Wooded Foothills. So they're going to be able to moon us next turn through anything. Likely ditching both of these. Oh, that's just that's just like super game over. Alright, yeah, we'll get rid of those. Pass. I'm dead as a doorknob. Cause that like you can beat Blood Moon with this deck, but you can't beat Blood Moon with this deck if you're not on the battlefield. It's your swamp. So that's like half the battle, I guess. They drew Utopia Sprawl. So they have Sprawl, Wooded Foothills, Double Moon. So like we're kind of still playing Magic, I guess. <coughs> that's the con. That's the plan. That's what we're doing. Okay, there's the moon. So the last card in hand's moon. I'm gonna thought seize them to take the moon, even though it doesn't do anything. Because I want to fill my graveyard for this, uh, for this angler. Like we're gonna we're gonna start the slow, the slow drudge to delving a Gurmag angler. Popping out from okay. I guess that cuts my opponent off quite a few draws. And if my opponent's not attacking. What could this be? I think I'm just gonna dismember this. I think I'm just gonna I just wanna fill my graveyard up. Alternatively, I could just thought seize them and then EE whatever they want to do and leave this like a stormbite dragon. Yeah. Talked myself into it. You gonna bolt me? No, they have a land. Um, yeah, I'm actually just going to play the EE on one. 
Because, like, what else am I doing, right? I'm not going to find my basic map island without cantrips. So I think we're just going to try to harass my opponent, slow my opponent down, and fill my graveyard up. Because this, it basically, this effectively doubles, double uh, stone rains them. That's bad. Arbor Elf, that's, that's not necessarily super bad. So I'm going to take four, and then I'm going to take three. I'm kind of doing it. One, two, three, four. I wonder if I can get away with going to three. I think I can. They have four mana anyway, so they're, they're, what's the difference between three and four? Another Blood Braid Elf? Yeah, I'm just going to be mana efficient. Yep, they get in here. Well, no, we can get this angler down, right, Cody? We can actually just we can get nasty next turn. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Because now we can play angler. Just kidding, we can't play Angler. That's that's game over. Because now I can't play any of my threats and I can't EE. So yeah, that just that actually just cuts cuts me zero out to me. <clears throat> Close but no cigar. And I board out the snapcasters. So I can't I can't get the moon off the table. And I can't play a threat. And we're just going to keep it the same way it is. Be aggressive on the play. Get the 4 1. My dog is so tired after having a whole day of uh, swimming, which is what he's, he did this weekend. He, we, we showed him water for the first time. And he's just like super beat. Um, Mither, if you're still in the chat, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. We'll lead off. I like the sand. I can interact every single way on turn one. I can get rid of a Utopia Sprawl or dismember something. I just need a second land. So I'm going to cycle my Street Wraith before I fetch. I like the sand a lot. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate you all for following. It's going to help me get up there. I'm almost, like I said, when I get to 1,000, I can apply for some more sponsorships. All right. Well, if we're not going to draw a land, that's probably one of the better draws. So they put one card on the bottom. Oh, yeah. So we're just going to take this tireless tracker. <coughs> Alternatively, I could have taken um, Arbor Elf. And then set up Serum Visions, which could have happened. So I played Forest Arbor Elf. I probably should just dismember this to just... But I definitely should have taken the Arbor Elf there. That was a mistake on my part. This just makes sure that my land doesn't get blown up and I can play a threat. Yes, it does. If we draw a land next turn, we are, we are in good shape. We draw a land next turn, it doesn't really matter what my opponent does. Alright. Um now I'm just gonna play it. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get one in play so that if we do get Blood Moon next turn. And I could have thought seized into the Blood Moon, but 
I think it's important to get get a threat down here. There's a mountain. Okay, Courser. Courser is annoying. All right, gas. Yeah, I was just wondering if that was too slow, you know what I mean? Like, does that actually matter? Attack before we play Shadow. Number two. We should be in good shape now. Um, I think I want to get the guy. I think I want to get my creature into play because there's a chance that Serum Vision doesn't, like, Serum Vision usually doesn't find you a land on the turn you want it. It finds you a land next turn. And that's when Serum Vision is good. Um, so we play Windswept Heath, and they have a Wooded Foothills. You have to hurry this game along. So they don't have any cards in hand. Um, that's mad. The Bayloss on top. So let's Serum Visions. We're looking for Battle Rage at this point. I don't really want either of these cards. Put on the bottom. Okay, so Seer Visions is fine. We have plenty of mana. So I go to eight, which means they have to block. They take eight, and then they're going to have to block again the turn afterwards. Just putting them in the abyss now. So the BNR is tomorrow. I wonder if they'll make any changes. I think that Ancient Stirring should go. I think that uh, Ancient Stirrings it provides unhealthy play patterns when the decks that it goes into. It's also the best cantrip in the format, which is frustrating. That a green deck, a colorless deck, gets the best form of deck manipulation. I agree, Teddy. I agree. My opponent's holding on to priority here, though. I'm going to get some water while my opponent's thinking. It's a, isn't it tomorrow? <laughs> You're parodying bullshit. You read. No, I am thinking for myself. I mean, I guess I meant to say, Grant, the decks that C Ancient Stirrings is in create bad play patterns. Tron creates play patterns that are difficult to interact with because there's lands. There's no good way to interact with lands. Yes, Burning Inquiry does too. I think that Burning Inquiry, you can make an argument for Burning Inquiry to go. I, I, I actually, Grant, I wrote an article for Top Deck Productions that's going up this week about Ancient Stirrings and how it shouldn't be in there. So, like, I'm definitely not just not thinking for myself here. Like I, I'm formulating my own opinions. Like, Tron is a deck that there's no good answers to in the format. They're all, the, the cards are too slow, or they play into their sideboard card that trades at mana efficiency advantage. And um, in KCI, KCI is an artifact deck that creates play patterns where shatters aren't even good against them. Did I say I'm not thinking for myself? That came out wrong. Yeah. I, I, I stuttered over, I tripped over my words when I said that. I tripped over my words. I am thinking for myself. 
Doesn't it happen tomorrow, Teddy? Is it? Isn't the BNR tomorrow? Is it? I don't even know. I thought I saw somebody tweeting about that it was tomorrow. I don't pay. I haven't paid attention to it like super super point. Let me look up. Look it up here. On Van Twin, what is my opponent doing? They haven't even disconnected. Uh, oh, we're back. Okay. I would. I think the format would be better without it. I guess I, I, I was trying to pass the time. That's my opinion. But you could get rid of a lot of cards that are not good. You get rid of Street Wraith. Street Wraith probably shouldn't be in the format. Hmm. Unbanned Twin. Cody Jones. Letting his be known. Second is way more potent. I definitely feel like I have a much, I have a much better grasp on the deck after I watched Matt Nass's stream. Matt Nass, if you can, if you have time and you want to learn about the deck, Matt Nass streamed a league of it a little while ago, and he just talked through a lot of the stuff. Unban Ivogan. nice. Unban Ivogan. I should just, I should give you like a five minute timeout for that. Look at this guy. Unban Eye of Ugin. God, my opponent's like just barely keeping. They're probably just angry that I'm going to whoop them after I play so slow. Because <sighs> I don't play very fast, which is an issue that I have. For one second. You got him for one second. Nice. Unban Jet. I did see the Stoneforge Mystic go up. I think if Jason Bloodbright Elf have shown you anything, that you can just probably like willy nilly unban these ba these fair cards, and it doesn't really matter. Because like, you don't fix the inherent issues of the format, in my opinion. Like what? Like <laughs> the Stoneforge Mystic really fix the issues these fair decks have. Jit is crazy in creature-on-creature -creature matchups. For sure. Could you imagine, like, in Affinity Mirrors, if one of them had Jit? <coughs> yes. All right, my opponent's lost connection. I guess I can just move back here to the deck list. While my opponent thinks about it. Yeah, it just doesn't... Like, I just don't think it really matters. I, I think Stoneforge Mystic is going to be... Uh, Stoneforge Mystic is going to be, like, one of those decks... You know, like, you think of all the decks that Lingering Souls is good against and how short that list is. The same Stoneforge Mystic is going to fill the same space in the league. Like, Stoneforge Mystic is going to dominate 30% of the metagame. And you're and it's still going to lose to the same decks you lost. Your decks are still going to lose the same decks you lost to beforehand. And it has to be unanswered to get down. It being bad, yes. Well, no, if they if they don't... So, here's here's where I think you're wrong, Teddy. I think they're going to lose games where they don't jam Stone Forge Mystic on two. Because if you don't... No, no, because if you're playing... Because if you're playing... um, 
if you're not playing against combo, if you play like if you give storm forever, then you're gonna lose the game by not providing a clock. Like people, the best way to beat combo decks is to pro is to like get a clock, not interact with them. Oh, it's not a powerful. Yeah, I think I think that more people like if you have Stoneforge Mystic. You and you're on the draw in turn two. You're gonna lose more games, I think, because you don't jam it. Than you're gonna lose because you do jam it. <clears throat> Back when I played Splinter Twin, I tapped out. I, I played this like derpy Naya Collected Company deck, and I tapped out on turn three all the time because it's just it's like I I couldn't win if I didn't. I I just lost if they had it, but if I just didn't use my mana, then it was. Just useless. Come on. I think in a little while I'm going to start streaming uh, some uh, Traverse Shadow again. I think the metagame is moving a little bit away from humans. And that was where that was such a poor matchup that I didn't play it. And uh, I think my teammate for the unified GP for Modern is going to play a Snap Bowl deck. And he's going to take the Snapcasters. So. I think Stoneforge is a turn two. Because you have to invest another turn into it. That it's so slow if you don't play it on turn two, you might as well not have it on your in your deck. This format is faster than Legacy is on average, in my opinion. Like Legacy, you have a lot more turn ones, but then you have a lot more interaction to deal with those turn ones. Like you're gonna lose more games holding on to Stormforge Mystic than dying because you played it. I like Settle and Standard. It's like Settle and Standard. Uh, you yes, you lose. Like you've got to just play your Stoneforge Mystic on two, or don't have it in your deck, in my opinion. But I tend to play things also, like I, I like my slant on magics to play aggressively. And that's why I don't think I lose to a lot of combo decks. I think, like, I think I have good game against combo decks because that's how I play. Most of my losses come to control decks. Because I play decks that normally just don't beat control decks. When do we have to play a Wall of Omens deck? Someday. Someday. Blue-White Control was... If I get to a 1,000 followers, then I can apply for a larger loan order. I can apply for stuff. Uh, Legacy is so much slower than modern. Stone Forge Mystic is just okay. That format, modern, will you alive? You begin against combat decks because you play toxic decks. Yeah, I think also there, Weens, I or not Weens, Grant. I agree with that, but I think I also like understand like that I'm not going to beat this combo deck if I don't. Like I did well against combo decks when I played Naya Zoo back in the day because I have to establish my own game plan and. Oshoth, not much. I'm glad you're good to see you in here. Ban Opal. I think you can get away with... with You can leave Mox Opal in the format if you get rid of Ancient Stirrings. Death and Taxes is also technically a Wall of his deck. A key Cord, maybe that's why I like them all. Yes. Unban Twin. You and Cody Jones have to hang out here. God, this is so frustrating. My opponent just, like, lost connection. And I don't even know if this is, like, a malicious thing. They basically just, like... Wasted away parts of my life. Which is so sad. So I have a spreadsheet going here, and I'm I was I was gonna my next project is gonna. I wanted to get, like, 
I've got a spreadsheet that's got my last, I don't know, what, 92 games of Death Shadow recorded? 92 matches. I wanted to write something after that when I got to 100. The problem is 100 is probably not... Like, 100 matches is probably a good enough sample size to, like, determine the effectiveness of a deck in a format. What it's probably not enough, because of how diverse modern is, is to exactly be like, here are all my matchups. And here's, like, here's where you're advantaged in, here's where you're not advantaged in. Because even the, like... The deck that I've played against the most is actually, in those last hundred matches, has been Shadow decks. Okay, my opponent's back. Nice. <laughs> Whether it's Grixis or Jun. Those are the decks that I've played against the most. And then it's Black Green Infect, and then it's Humans. And Hollow One. But, like, again, the Grixis, the Shadow decks, then they lost the game due to Black Mirror Action. Nice. All right, well, I'm going to jump back in for another league. I have not changed the list, so I just I, I I took notes down there. I haven't changed the list. Besides today, I cut a steam vents and I cut a serum. I cut a scalding tar and I added a blood crypt. All right, let's jump back into another league. I kind of wanted to try to keep things consistent and like and what I could control. And again, like I when it came to how varied my opponent's skill level are, as soon as I got three losses in a league, I dropped. And that's that's kind of the only thing that I can control, you know? Alright, I'm actually gonna re do another video.